Hi, my name is Akira Ishiguro, and I'm a Japanese artist. My work presents a landscape painting that depicts a scenery of geological time through the surface of the marble. In recent years, I'm exhibiting entitled Critical Reflection on the Anthropocene Through the Marvelous Paintings and presenting scenery of the Anthropocene, the surface of the stratum of new geological age. The painting of marble series consists of the gravitational field painting series, the marvelous painting series, and the painting of marble painting series in between. I had already imagined the marvelous painting series when I started the gravitational field painting series in 2011, which is a set of paintings like a front and a back. When I looked at it as scenery, the answer was fitted very well as a word that could be applied to imagine the future. And the fact that it is a process, not yet scientifically confirmed, and that it is a surface of a new geological age fits my concept of the surface. Objectively speaking, I paint stone. I paint many kinds of marble from the orthodox to the layer, but the name of marble is just a trading name given to a stone when it is sewn into a product. And structurally, it is not so different from any other stone laying around. Painting of marble is a painting of joints. In the text I have written, a line that extracts the law of the nature, the trajectory through the earth to the groundwater. It means joints, or in simpler terms, crack. How these joints are formed is that the rock in the ground is subjected to pressure from within the earth, which causes small cracks or joints to form. These are the pathways of fluids, a fluid that percolates downwards due to gravity. It is in essence a rigid derived from the rain that falls on and erodes the mountain ranges. The rain carries various messages from the surface of the earth. The oxygen and minerals dissolved in the rainwater pass through the joints. It hardens under heat and pressure, and these joints are formed. If you think about this process, you will see a variety of natural scenery. Yes, I agree. I think that when we look at the change of landscape in geological time, the landscape that we usually see is just a momentary view. For example, I think the Earth's landscape is changing now due to global warming, but if you look back at the past, there were times when the earth was hotter than it is now, and times when it was colder. We just happen to be living in the Holocene, a period that is more comfortable for humans. I think 
This book will be very helpful for you to see my paintings. I each depict the scenery. The anthropocene that the marvelous painting series will be able to attract geologists of the distant future. The gravitational field painting series depicts the scenery of the Holocene and all geological epochs of earlier. And the painting of marble painting series depicts the scenery of the transitional time that connect them. First of all, when you wet a found pebble in the water, the color appears to rise. A similar process is used to create the gravitational field painting series. When the paints are applied, they are a little bit dull because the gloss is suppressed. But when they are finally coated with urethane clear, the dull colors wake up to reveal their bright colors. Secondary, when he says he sees grains and textures through light. I think he means the world as seen through a polarizing microscope. There is a very impressive story about this. At my exhibition in Leicester, when he saw the marvelous painting series for the first time without any explanation, he guessed what was on them. I have to admit that this was a first time for me, and I was amazed. He said it was as if he was looking at scenery, thousands of meters deep into the earth. I also came across a newspaper article in March this year, which showed a photograph that looked just like the marvelous painting series. It was an article about the work of Dr. Sano of the National Museum of Nature and Science, and it was a photograph of basalt from the Antonjawa Plateau taken under a polarizing microscope. When I visited him and showed him an image of my marvelous painting, he mistook it for an image from a polarizing microscope. Geologists routinely see the marvelous painting series-like views of the micro world through polarized light microscopes. This coincidence was very interesting for me. I see the white I'm using here has two technical roles first. First of all, they create beautiful gradation by covering the white color with other colors. The parts that you pointed out are that the white parts remain without being covered by the colors. The white parts giving them direction encourage the viewer to direct their gaze. This is just a basic technique of painting composition to make the viewer's eyes stay on the picture. Emeritus Professor Young, looking at the marvelous painting series, refers to them as veins and grains. 
Membrane is a balance of the two. The veins are the joints, and grains are the sand, mud, and minerals. I've never been asked about this before, but in the case of the marvelous painting series, I could say that they are new minerals of the Anthropocene epoch. As for the question of whether light is important, of course, I think it is. The painting itself is not luminous, but I think it is important to feel the light from the painting. When I once visited the Barb Museum in Fukui Prefecture, Japan, Professor Nakagawa, who led the Barb Project team at Lake Suiget, said, Climate is defined by the landscape. A landscape where not a single tree grows is called a desert, and a climate where not a single tree can grow is called a desert climate. It's all tied to the landscape, he said. They are digging 70,000 years of the barb from Lake Suiget and using pollen fossils from the barb to reconstruct the landscape of that time. They have already drawn the vegetation landscape from 40,000 to 500 years ago. As far as the Anthropocene is concerned, Emeritus Professor Young of the University of Leicester, whom I met, has been standing down as the Anthropocene Working Group Chair Leader since establishing the task group in 2009 and became the new Subcommission on Quaternary Stratigraphy Chair and is working for the GSSP recognition of the Anthropocene. In Japan, there is the Bep Bay Sediment, the Anthropocene GSSP project, led by Associate Professor Kuae of Ehime University, who have identified the Bep Bay Seabed Barb as a recording medium with the Anthropocene key makers, indicating its impact on the whole Earth system. And as ideal sediment to monitor global ecosystem degradation at the Anthropocene boundary. They aim to propose this site as a candidate for GSSP selection. As you can see from what I have told you so far, I base my work on perspectives like theirs. So I guess you could say I approach it from a geological point of view. I think everyone all remember picking up beautiful pebbles containing quartz or mica on the beach and riverbanks as a childhood and taking them home excitedly. And I would like you to imagine the magnificent story, scenery engraved in the pebbles that made such memories the entrance. Thank you very much.